on day 10, I think, of the teak deck removal. Today we are not removing any teak deck. We are getting hauled out on the smallest freaking pontoon thing known to man with a crane. This is gonna get real interesting real fast. Hi, we're Kristen and Jeff, and we've been fixing up our 40-year-old boat over the last four years. We sold everything that we owned on land for a life on the water. We've had our ups and downs, but we've finally set sail to the sun. Except most recently, we found ourselves stationed on the beautiful Caribbean island of St. Martin to tackle the biggest boat project we've ever done, removal of the teak deck on our Halbergrassi 352. And we're doing it ourselves. Follow along for every screw, every plank, and everything in between. And right now we have two feet below us to so go to the left, my dear. We are supposed to go over there. Go to the left. Go yeah. to the left. Okay. Hopefully it'll be okay. 1.5. Okay. We should have extra water right now. Anyways, uh, yeah. Alright, let's, let's focus on what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, for obvious reasons I think you can understand, we didn't film the approach to the boatyard pontoon. It all happened very fast, and as you can see, our landing strip is quite small. But we'll give you an overview right now. Oh my god, we just made it. We'll get some other shots soon, but like, holy. Wow. We had to do it in two attempts. Because the wind was just gusting at the last second. Oh my gosh. And I got to put the, the, oh my platform, the length of my boat. <laughs> and it's a dinghy dog. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. That's incredibly scary. Jeff did a really good job though. And when we had to abort, we knew because we came and scoped out the area ahead of time and looked where the deeper water was. So we just did a little loop de loop, came back in, got it the second try, had a bunch of hands to help us, and we're good so far. Here we are. Get hauled! Oh my gosh! As you can see, all here, out to about like that, is super shallow and rocky. We had to come in literally at like a perpendicular line and then at the last second turn over there. The wind caught us the first time, like we mentioned. Tried it number two, worked just fine. First thing that they said when we pulled up was, where's your teak decks? <laughs> so that was funny. <laughs> But uh, yeah, looking good. We showed them photos of where it should be placed. So everything hopefully should be okay. Never been hauled by a crane Why? before. <laughs> Stressed out. Well, yeah. Holy. All new. That's part of it, right? With a crane? With a crane and Come that, on. We're in 1.5 feet under the keel right now. Well. Yeah, that's nuts. Oh God. We love you, Joko. You can do it. Look at this dog just chilling as well. Like, he's, the, he's used to it. <laughs> They're checking to make sure that we're not on the prop shaft. Yeah, I think they got it too. How did we never see a boat getting craned out at all the time? I know. Crazy. Wow. Heart's going so fast right now. Wait till my brother and John get a load of this. Wait till you guys see this. Oh my god. And then you own a crane like this. Holy shit. And we got some wind. Swinging in the wind here. Oh god, oh god. Good Look job. at the dog. He's like, okay, I'll move now. Is this is good? crazy. Yeah. Okay, I gotta save my battery power. My phone's gonna die. Look how dirty. Nice. So the yard guys are just organizing the pressure washer for us so that we can clean the bottom. Uh, but Jeff is just looking, we do have a little bit of like a keel damage because we hit the sand or something and so a little bit of the paint scraped away. So we're just trying to find out where that is and so that when we're up um, on the stands um, that we're not going to have the stands under that part so we can repair it later. Oh my gosh, look what we found down here. This damage is when we caught that fish trap the other night on, on the crossing from Antigua. Wow, look how fast that did damage all the way down to the freaking fiberglass. Look at that, whoa. And what are the chances it hooked right here? Like seriously, look at this coral reef. Holy 
<laughs> That's intense. Nice. And here he goes. This is a true DIY yard. One of the reasons we chose this boat yard was the DIY aspect of it. Not required to hire out for all of our projects, which in the end will save us a ton of money. Plus, I'm not sure anyone would do as thorough a job as Jeff, am I right? Luckily, most of our bottom growth is all soft stuff, so it's coming off. It doesn't look like any real barnacles so far, so that's good. As you can probably tell, we were pretty anxious this day, but luckily everything went well, and now we have an extra story to tell. Here's the next step. They're going to bring this uh, little trolley trailer here and put us on it. Never seen this before. <laughs> I think I was fairly quick at that. It's a big job. Yeah, the uh, power washing. What did the guy say about it? Oh, they didn't say anything, but I think that they're probably thinking, wow, this guy is meticulous getting every last freaking strand no. of algae off their bottom. Hey, if you're going <laughs> to do the job, do it right. Yep, and it saves us time later for the sanding and everything. Yeah, we're just under this like random catamaran. For shade. That's here for shade. Yep, <laughs> it's working. Oh, look. looks like it's hit time before. Oh, yeah. I know, and I was noticing that they're, uh, they need some bigger washers. On a couple of them. <laughs> Speaking of meticulous, oh my I'm gosh. not the only one then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye, Joko. Bye, Joko. <laughs> and our final resting place for the next couple of months. Good location. The washrooms are right here, and the showers are right over here at the office. So, pretty good. A quick break to shout out our amazing patrons. Mike C, Wolfgang B, Abe Bateman, William Tubbs, Dennis and Sarah Collins, Colin and Stephanie Ibbett, Alan Sherrill, Kate Fidel, Sivan and Travis Lamarche, Lindsay and Bruce Fraser, Brad and Jen Ibbett, Stevie Blanc, Sheen Marine, Alan Onderdonk, and Lucy and Peter Haggerty. We appreciate you all so much. We made it. We are now up amongst the palm trees. We're on the hard and we are relaxing with a glass of coconut water before we figure out our next move. But yeah, stressful day, but everything went to plan. These guys here at the yard so far, A plus, they're really knowing their stuff and we felt very confident in their abilities, so no worries there. Signing off from day 10 of this teak removal journey. We're burning the midnight oil on no, our no, first night. You're a liar. <laughs> All you social media people. Are I'm shit. not a liar. Okay, obviously it's not midnight because we're still awake. And let's be honest, at, at 8 p.m. we normally turn into pumpkins and we are freaking done. But it's dark and so it fits everything. It's a okay, lie. it's a lie. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so we're going to try and save the bolts we took out of our track because we went shopping for track. new bolts and nuts. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of money apparently because they're like a low profile head and they're a certain dimension, certain width, 10 millimeter to fit down inside the aluminum truck. We're keeping our tracks, so we want to keep these. But mm -hmm. in order for that to happen, uh, we need to somehow rehab the tip of all the threads because it got cut off before. I think I can do it. If we get a top set, if I get a file or grind off that end part, um, and do a I, lot I, of work. Put some cutting oil, and yeah, it's a lot of manual screwing around, but I think it's possible to save all these bolts. So since I was seeing five and six dollars US a single bolt, oh, and we need like 70 something, and I have free time, I think <laughs> I will put the work in. So I'm gonna, I was gonna do a couple to make sure I could actually do it, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and just clean all these, and then I'll start the process of finding the tap set, the die, or whatever it is, um, and see if we can rehab these. I think I can do it. But. That's you can do that. it, That's what baby. We're doing. Yeah. Yes, using our time and manual labor instead of our dollars. Well, the other thing is the material is already here. That is true. And they very always true. say, you know, okay, and I actually believe it, which is why I was trying to buy new bolts and nuts. Um, is that you should never use the same stainless steel fastener, which is probably true. But in our case, they were set well in the track with a silicone seal, etc. So they're not corroded and damaged. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not as critical of as it could be. There are more critical situations where you would never ever bother reusing it. Yeah. So with that in mind, and given the fact that shopping is a nightmare, <laughs> we'll give it a shot. No guarantees, no promises. But if we can do it, we'll I mean, see it might it be works. a win. Yeah. yeah. You can see how much stuff is going off. So. This is just I'm clearing sealant, and then yeah. other than that, um, if I it's just the tip that throws me off because 
I know there's ways to cut a bolt to save the thread by pre-threading a couple nuts on and what have you, but in this case, that's not the case. <laughs> like we can't do that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's about tapping a new thread from the beginning, at the yeah, beginning of the, the bolt. So I'll try and figure this out. The biggest issue, you, can you see it? If you zoom in on this, try and get it. Try and get a macro shot of this. So this has been cut off after it was installed. So when they cut it, they left this little tiny sharp nub. And when you try and put a, a nut on here, it ends very quickly. You can't get it in there. So what, the, let me tilt this this way. So the story goes that I need to put a file and bring this up to a bit of a point all the way around and get rid of that. This point right here is what causes the problem in the nut. So if I can use a file or a grinder, I'll tilt that this way, I can grind this off and reestablish that so I can actually get a nut on here. The rest of this, as you can see, pretty good. After 40 years of service, this thing is good to go. Yeah. Here's the head. I wanted to get away from flathead because anyone who's ever used one knows why. Um, <laughs> but in, in the process of trying to do that, it's a nightmare. But yeah, so I'll, I can put these back. They're in good shape. But yeah, I gotta, I gotta fix that tip and I'll just run this through a die set to clean this up. This one's pretty clean compared to some of the other ones, but. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end of that, we should have perfect ones we can put back. I sure hope so. Yeah. I hope it works. Me too. If it does, that's like the best hack of all time. Yes. yes. Because know, otherwise it's, it's like six state. US or six Euro for one, which we have to order from Sweden. It's also already here. If anyone gives a yeah. shit about climate change, which, you know, us going into the most extreme emergencies <laughs> is probably ever, we'll see, mark words. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we should not like burn energy for no reason. That is another really good point. And you have to internalize it. We all have to internalize it and actually act on it. If we don't, we're screwed. Yeah. So there you go. Everybody has to do their part. Not that we're some kind of perfection, like seriously. No, but try to do what we can. Might as well. And this is what we're trying to do. <laughs> sure is. Right now, anyway. <laughs> Okay, well, good luck, honey. I hope, Thanks. I really do hope it works out it's because- be tomorrow's mission when I'm sick of doing other manual labor. Yeah, so. every night we do write out a little list of goals for the next day. Um, otherwise, and we're, otherwise we're not productive at all. No, we're just like hanging around, having coffee and not sure what to do next. <laughs> so it's a really good idea when you're- well, As you know, I'll be out here tomorrow before coffee, ripping up wood. Oh yes, maybe even before breakfast, we'll see. Okay, good luck. I am finishing making dinner. I'll let you know when it's done. Burgers on the menu tonight. <coughs> <laughs> is that your reaction for burgers or are you excited? I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> Welcome to day 11 of taking off the teak deck in the boatyard. It's a Saturday, but that doesn't stop us from doing work. And Jeff is up here removing the midship cleats and now getting the wood out from underneath the uh, fuel fills. Jeff was a bit nervous taking these cleats off because we thought that they would be stuck onto the deck pretty good and be all corroded on the bottom. But look at that. That's not too bad. They just need to get cleaned up. And the wood that was underneath of them, Jeff said was like in perfect condition. So they were sealed real well to the deck. So we just have to clean them up and make them a little bit nicer looking. And I think that we can reuse them, which is amazing. Saves us a lot of money. And did I mention how happy we are that the bathrooms are right here? And the showers are like right over here. In other boat yards, they're like freaking 10, 15 minute walk away. So this is very nice. And oh, hello, there's me. And also our view is pretty freaking nice for a boat yard. So we're happy with that. Hey, where, why? Cut. <laughs> say, where are eye protection? Okay, this is the pile that I've done. So those nuts all flow up and down on those. And what have you done to them? I'm re-threading. So this is the pile I haven't done. Yeah. So now we're on the next part, which is I have to like take this aggressive nub off so that I can run it through a die here and make sure the threads are clear. So honey, close your eyes. Okay. <laughs> so there, that's removed the little edge. Then we dip it in this little cutting fluid here. Then we put it in our die straight. This is the tricky part because it's usually the first thread that I need to rethread, and of course, it's always a pain in the ass. Okay, so what I've done is I've got it in there. From here to there, it's 90 degrees perpendicular. Yep. Straight on, we look straight on. Yep. 
So now it's important to do that because now it might require me to put some torque and you want to know you're going straight. Otherwise you're not threading it. You're thre well, you're threading it with a new, new direction. Don't want to do that. So this one's going pretty well. A little bit of resistance right there. And you're just working it in, backing it out a bit. And you just keep going like that until we get past the part that it just really doesn't like. Okay, so there, and I've cut across the part that's the worst a couple times. And now I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go all the way. If it was really, really bad and I was re-threading, like in the last one, I was re-threading almost a missing thread. I like to back it right out, blow it out, clean off your threads of your uh, bolt with a brush and then put it back through so that you're not dragging debris in between the bolt and the die, uh -oh. causing friction and causing trouble. So now I'm gonna run it all the way through till it comes out the back here. And when you're when you're doing this, like I, I have to torque it right now, but now it's getting easier. And now it's almost to show you, I can actually run it with my fingers now. So the problem is in the tip. So now that's done, we'll run it back out all the way. See, I can almost do it with my fingers, not quite. So we'll roll this out and prep for the next one. I'll just do this. I'll brush this. We'll get a nut, a known good nut. I did this before <laughs> I went through with all these nuts and a known good bolt to make sure they're good. Okay, we thread it. Wow. Bam. And that is how you save a bolt. <laughs> I went to go buy them, but the specs of these particular bolts, which fit our tracks. Yeah, are very specific for underneath the head. Very specific. And they have to be that way because the cars on the track go over them, so they have to be flush. And when you get the specialized, you get the price tag. Okay, this one's a lot of grinding. Look out. All right. Thanks for showing us. Yeah, no Pro tips. No OMG. You are down two. Two left that I don't two. know. Two. Out of what? Like 70? 37%. Yeah. And you have been successful with all of them. Except for these two. Except two. And the thing is, these I, are the ones you have to go around and do a second time. We banged on these time. so hard that they're so warped out that, yeah. like this one, frick, I think that's going to be a no. This one is going to be a maybe. I could try and hammer them back before going <laughs> through the dive. Look at your ears. <laughs> I'm so done with these things being on my face. <laughs> I love you. You are the most hardworking guy. Everyone, give Jeff some love in the comments. He is the most hardworking freaking guy. It's no, like sun going down. She's been looking after me, bringing me drinks, feeding me, making dinner right now. Keeping you occupied, telling you stories, singing you songs. Oh, I said put on background music. And <laughs> who's that person who was listening to? I don't know. Some random YouTube person that's like not good. So we changed it real quick. We're gonna be having some pizza for dinner tonight. I have the dough over here rising. We're having some barbecue chicken, red onion, corn, and we have some black beans and a cheese mix of matza and emmental that's gonna go on it. So that'll definitely be very filling for us tonight. Day 12 of the Teak Deck Removal Project. I will show myself later after I have had a nice warm shower. This morning we have been taking the tarps off and the plastic off the sides to let the deck dry because once again we had rain storm last night that was unforecasted which is really nice. Jeff is working on a test patch here. He sanded it away because as you can see there is a lot of these cracks in uh, the gel coat top skin here and another person that has an HR we actually met him in the Anchorage the other day he came over and we were showing that to him he was saying that he knew from somewhere I'm not sure how or where but that all of the halibut grasses that were made the hulls were made in, in a certain season with the different like weather temperatures or something in one year they all have these crazings everywhere so I don't know if that's true or not but that's what we got, so that's fun. Right now, Jeff is just out in town with a friend buying a whole bunch of new um, tools and stuff that we need for the job. Things like a belt sander and a transformer, I think it is, so that we can hook up to the power here because it's 220 volts and all of our power tools are 110s. 
so gotta go buy that. We finally do have more of a plan of attack of what we're going to do with the deck and with um, core replacement. So stay tuned for that. It'll be very interesting to see what we find once we tear open the freaking deck. Bit nervous, but we do have a friend here that has done it before and he's gonna help Jeff and give pointers and tips. Um, so hopefully the job will be a lot smoother and go a lot faster. So that's good. Gotta get out of here before hurricane season, of course. Oh, I was just talking about you. I know, I just photobombed you. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna be so funny. Nice. So I was just saying that you were just in town uh, getting to get some more it. tools and stuff. Were you successful? Almost, yeah, the transformer. They, they were actually sold out of all those transformers that they had on the shelf. We were or, just or, there a few days ago and there were lots. Oh no, so the ones on the shelf were there, but they didn't have any in the back, new in boxes. Oh. And I'm like, you know what, I'll just take one off the shelf. And he's like, oh no, you can't. And I'm like, why? He's like, well, the fuse holders are not on them. I'm like, oh my God. So they were all just like kind of display. Okay. Been, been cannibalized. So, so. so I, there's transformers <laughs> available that are not in a nice case like that, but they're much smaller in terms of restoring. Well, that's kind of what we want, isn't it? I think ultimately that would be good. And they're, so they have them at Ace and they have them at that store. So I just opted out at that point because it was right at the end. And the ones that they had at that, at that oh, tool store. Oh, you saw store, it at Ace already and then you left there and not buying it and went together. Right, because I was, oh. I was planning on getting the big case, right? Oh. The breaker and all that. Yeah. Um, and so I um, waited for that store because they didn't have them. Then I found they have the same brand as the other guys for the little one. But the ones at Ace had plugs on the, out, on the side like the 110 plugs, which is kind of cool, saves me an outlet. Okay. So then I'm thinking that we'll just bomb over there and get it, whatever, and I'll figure out how to wire it. I got the company name, I'll look on their website. Okay, did you find other? So I found anyway. lots of other stuff, yeah. Um, and you know what I also did? What? On the way back, we went for a beer. And <laughs> of, course. of course, we've been discussing this the entire time. And I I joined Boatworks today. What? Oh, they're a Patreon? I'd say, yeah, 150 bucks ha. a month. And because of this, where this project is taking us, it's kind of, we need some professional help. Speaking of which, joining Patreons are a fabulous thing. A lot of value added services and support for the people making the content and who will ultimately help you. So, if you feel so inclined, join help our Patreon. Us, we're gonna be going down the rabbit hole. Yes, because so we now, need all the help we can get. Thank you. This is a long freaking clip, but wasn't expecting you to come back right now. I feel like a whole video just in this one clip. Um, okay, so we'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>